What's up? It's Joe, and welcome to Joe Talks About Nutrition Topics and Discusses Nutrition Misconceptions that she's learned and researched over the years. On today's episode, we'll be talking all about calories, what calories are, how many we need, tracking calories, and managing calories to lose weight. Because we hear about calories all the time. How many calories is in that? How many calories did I burn? And there's so much more to calories than merely your food and working out, so let's go ahead and get talking. So first, let's answer the question, what is a calorie? Calorie is a unit that measures energy, which is the energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. 1,000 calories is equal to one kilocalorie. In nutrition and fitness, kilocalories and calories are quite interchangeable. You'll easily find either or in the back of food items. Sometimes, calorie is stated in kilojoules. So if you find this in the back of your food, then you can just divide it by 4.2 because 4.2 kilojoules equals one calorie. Researchers measure the calories in food using a bomb calorimeter. This is a small chamber where food will be burned and used to heat water. So the hotter the water, the higher the calories in that food item. Of course, today we have a database and we have standards to use and measure calories and we don't really need a bomb calorimeter anymore to see how many calories is in our food. Calories represent the amount of energy that a food or beverage stores. So in other words, calories give us energy. Our bodies need a certain amount of calories every day to continue its daily processes, such as pumping our blood and breathing. When we consume more calories than we need, then we store that excess as fat. But when we consume less calories than we need in a day, our body uses our reserve glycogen and our reserve fat as energy. Foods are a compilation of the three macronutrients that we talked about in the previous episode. The components of food that provides calories are carbohydrates with four calories per gram, protein with 4 calories per gram, and fat with 9 calories per gram. As you see, fat provides the most calories, which is a good thing for when food is scarce, but it's not exactly the most ideal when you are trying to lose weight or maintain weight. The vitamins and minerals, as well as fiber, have no calories. This energy is released into our bodies during digestion and it is distributed or stored in the cells in our body that need it. So let's talk about how many calories we need in a day. Everybody needs a minimum requirement of calories to survive and this is called your BMR or basal metabolic rate. Basically your basal metabolic rate is the amount of calories you would burn within 24 hours if you were just to lie down in bed resting and breathing all day. This is the amount of calories your body needs to perform perform its daily functions and keep you alive. The amount of calories that you will be needing for the day will depend on your height, your age, your gender, your body type and body size, as well as your body composition and your activity levels. Most teens and adults usually need about 1,500 to 2,000 calories a day, but this is merely based on averages. There are so many equations available to calculate your BMRs. I don't want to get into the equations so much, but if you guys are interested in finding out what your BMR is, then you can easily find a BMR calculator online. Now that we know what calories are, we can talk about using calories for weight loss or weight gain. And when we talk about this, we have to discuss your total daily energy expenditure. Somebody who is a little heavier will need more energy to move their body than somebody who is lighter. Since the BMR is mainly the calories you would need if you were just to rest all day, you'll have to adjust this number upward to account for your physical activity and other factors as well. So your total daily energy expenditure is composed of your BMR, the thermic effect of food, the thermic effect of activity, and your non-energy activity thermogenesis. So we're going to talk about this one by one. So your BMR accounts for about 50 to 70 percent of the calories that you will be burning. The thermic effect of food accounts for about 10 to 20 percent of the energy that your body uses because your body needs to use some of that energy to digest the food. Now we talk about your thermic effect of activity which accounts for about 20% of your daily expenditure. Energy that your body uses for exercise or planned movement. Somebody who is very active, walks a lot, exercises every day, would burn more calories than somebody who would simply sit at a desk job all day. Now we go to the NEAT or your non-exercise activity thermogenesis which is quite an exciting topic. Your NEAT is simply the amount of calories you burn 
when you're not exercising but still moving. Simply playing around with your pencil for about 20 minutes will burn you a few calories. Sitting up and down from your chair to go to the bathroom, from your bed to the kitchen to get some food will also burn some calories. So if you consciously try to increase your need, you'll actually be able to burn more calories than you usually do. And you can do this by making sure you get 10,000 steps a day. So weight maintenance, weight loss, and weight gain is usually summarized in what they say calories in and calories out. The four things that we have mentioned are what contribute to your calories out. While what contributes to your calories in is the food that you consume. If you want to lose weight, you would basically have to eat less than you burn in a day. And you don't have to count calories to do this. You can easily do this by increasing your NEAT, increasing your exercise activity, or simply by switching from high calorie low volume foods to low calorie high volume foods. But you also have to be careful because sometimes when you eat too little, your body doesn't just use the fat stored as energy but also goes in for your muscles. Living a healthy lifestyle and being active is not simply put into calories in and calories out. It's also important to keep in mind the quality of the calories you're consuming. For example, 100 calories of chips is not the same as 100 calories of banana. Fruits and vegetables have a lot of nutrients to give and are low in calories, while our processed foods don't have as much nutrients to give and are high in calories. So it's always important to have a balance of food in your diet. Should you count calories to lose weight? This is not necessary. If you are eating a balanced diet and moving your body, you won't have to count your calories because your body will be able to use that energy and nutrients for the things that it needs. If you don't have the best relationship with food, I don't recommend that you count calories. But it is also important to be aware of the calories in the food that we are taking and the nutrients that is available in the food that we consume. So with that, we have reached the end of this video. If you guys liked it, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also if you want more of this series comment below what else you want me to talk about don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well till the next video stay fab and eat for your body